Hello, brothers and sisters. Today I invite you to consider a second hindrance that may keep the kingdom of heaven from taking root in our lives and bearing fruit to the glory of God. That need not be our experience. This hindrance does not need to keep us away from entering into the kingdom and experiencing not only the kingdom of grace, but the kingdom of glory. We're uh, continuing our study of the parable of the soils that Jesus gave. Each of the parables in Matthew's account tell us the a little bit more about the kingdom that Jesus came to establish here and that he wants each of us to experience. Yesterday, we looked at the number one hindrance from someone experiencing the kingdom of grace and not believing and being saved ultimately in the kingdom of glory, and that is the fact that we have an, an enemy. The evil one, the wicked one, comes and steals away what has been planted in our hearts. So today, as we continue this, I pray you're asking Jesus to give you eyes to see, ears to hear about his kingdom, and giving him your heart ready to receive everything that he wants to plant in your heart and mine. Jesus would say the second hindrance in Matthew chapter 13. He says in verses 5 and 6, Matthew chapter 13, verse 5 and 6, that some of the seeds of his kingdom, the word of the kingdom, fell on stony, rocky places where they did not have much earth, shallow ground, shallow soil. They immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth, but when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Jesus does not want us to be hindered in bearing fruit and entering into and experiencing more deeply his kingdom. And he certainly does not want us to wither away. What is this second hindrance, this second soil that did not bear fruit when it received the word of the kingdom, the teachings of the kingdom? Jesus describes it as rocky and stony soil. This ground is very shallow. The the good soil is not very deep there, and the seed is not allowed to take root. Jesus would then tell us, though, what this meant in verses 20 and 21. The one who received the seed on stony places, rocky soil, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles, withers away, as Jesus said earlier. God does not want this to be our experience. When you give Jesus your heart, allow Jesus to take out that stony heart and to give you a heart that can be good soil, for him to plant his teachings within us. The problem here is it is shallow. We can have such a shallow, shallow understanding of Jesus and his kingdom. We can have a shallow experience in Jesus and his kingdom. And it starts off great. It's wonderful. But as soon as the times get tough, then such people that don't have deep roots, Jesus says, they wither away. The sun, the heat of the trials of this world cause that seed, instead of bearing fruit, causes it to wither away. Jesus is talking to us here about making sure that the seed that Jesus is planting, his grace, his teachings, his principles of righteousness, the his very own presence, truly bears uh, deeper roots in our experience. Uh, throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, Jesus has himself described as the root, uh, such as in Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Jesus wants to plant himself and his very teachings through the power of the Holy Spirit into your life and mine. Today, we can again give him our hearts, our lives, surrender, yield, trust, believe, and allow him to take root deeply in our souls. So that when tribulations and trials come, when problems and persecutions come our way, when tough times and trouble, whenever that there are afflictions and all that 
makes it difficult for us to carry out and to put into practice the teachings of Jesus. In those moments, Jesus wants his word and his presence through the Holy Spirit to abide deeply within us, to give us deeper roots, to give us the ability to weather the storm. Jesus would say that we each need to be rooted, as Paul would say in Ephesians, rooted in Christ himself, rooted in his teachings, putting them into practice by his grace and power, not having just a shallow understanding and a shallow commitment, but truly allowing that commitment, that experience, that faith, that relationship, that experience with Jesus to go deep in our lives. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, Paul would say that we must not only be rooted in Christ, but rooted and grounded in his love. Knowing how much God values us, that he so loved us that he gave us his only begotten son. He died upon the cross and demonstrated his love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Colossians 2, verse 7, again, saying, telling us that we must be rooted in Jesus and his love. Christ truly, as Ephesians 3 says, dwelling in our hearts by faith, trusting, believing his gospel promises so that we may be filled with all the fullness of God through the Holy Spirit that is dwelling and abiding in our inner being, as Paul says in Ephesians chapter 3, giving us depths of understanding so that we can understand the height and the depth and the width and the length of this amazing love that God has for us and allow his love to carry us through those tough times and tribulations. You see, the Apostle Paul would, after he planted churches and raised up believers in the kingdom as they believed the gospel, in Acts chapter 14, verse 22, it says that they went back strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. He says, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Today, I pray in your life, we're going through some hardships in our country, in our world at this time. And through these hardships, Jesus is inviting us to go deeper with him, more deeply in his teachings, greater understanding of what he's really doing in this world, what his kingdom is all about, and to go deeper in understanding all the dimensions of his amazing love that he has for each and every one of us. And as you focus on Jesus, as you focus on his teachings and understanding them and not sh being shallow, but having a deeper experience with God and his love, Jesus says this can carry you, this will carry you through the tough times. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, John wrote to the seven churches of modern-day Turkey, and he said, I am your brother and companion in the suffering and in the kingdom and the patient endurance that are ours in Jesus. And he, I was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. John the Apostle, the Apostle Paul, they all knew what it meant to suffer tribulation and persecution because of following Jesus and allowing his teachings of his kingdom to be planted deep in their souls. And he says we were able to have patient endurance because those are given to us in Jesus. Today, I want to invite you again, go to Jesus. Ask him for eyes that see, ears that hear, a heart that's willing to receive. Allow him to plant his teachings deep in your soul, to take root and to be strong so that no matter what we pass through, we would not lose our courage. We would not lose our faith. We would not lose our way. We would not allow the trials of this uh, life to wither away the good work that Jesus is doing in each and every one of us. Brothers and sisters, take courage. We are going through many tribulations and trials and afflictions as we enter the kingdom with Jesus and as we experience more deeply his kingdom. Take courage, brothers and sisters. Stay true. Stay firm. Stay solid in Jesus. Allow him, his spirit, and his teachings to go deeper, deeper, deeper still in your soul. May this be your experience and mine to the glory of God as we bear fruit for his kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.